In the last video, I showed you a game where AlphaZero with black was straining every sinew to grab the initiative. Fantastic uh, Gioca Piano, or Gioca Forte as I called it. This game is rather different. AlphaZero this time is white, and this is more about control and about restricting its opponent's pieces. And there are certain similarities that uh, between the game that, that I've already looked at, the very first game that I looked at in this little series. So Alpha Zero with white, and it's this variation of the English, which is fairly common at um, top levels. White has the two bishops, but black has a very solid position and of course to some extent white is losing a little bit of time in playing the queen out so early. Now in the game we looked at previously um, this was played by Stockfish and I'm just going to remind you of those moves again because there are distinct similarities between that game and the one we're about to look at. So here if you recall Alpha Zero allowed its kingside pawns to be broken and in fact gave up two pawns very quickly and succeeded in getting an attack well not just on the g-file but on the h-file as well and eventually through the middle in combination with this bishop and eventually this bishop as well but you can you can check out that game if you want to but just bear in mind this structure when we look at this game so this time, not a5, but d6 from Stockfish. And once again, b4, gaining some space, and e5. So this nice structure aims to, to block out white's extra bishop, you could call it. And, well, g3, e3 have been played before. Bishop b2 played by alpha 0, also pretty normal. And here, for example, the game between Portish and Larsen, from 1971, uh, Larson played knight c6 in that position, but lost a nice game. Portage played very well, actually. This time knight d7 from Stockfish. So pretty normal moves. Um, d4 has been played here before, leads into a kind of reverse French, actually. But d3 is more flexible. Knight, knight f8, pretty normal. We'll, we know this maneuver from, well, the Spanish or the Joker Piano with white, very normal indeed, and for King's Indian attack positions. So this knight may pop out here, and of course it's making room for the bishop. So all pretty normal so far. Now a5 from Stockfish, could just play knight g6 there, but a5. And castle, so no castles queenside in this case. Very normal development. I mean, so far, it's a pretty quiet game. And now, Alpha Zero starts to actually embark on a kind of middle game strategy. So it plays Bishop C3. Clearly, it's very keen to encourage pawn takes pawn. I have a feeling that most human players, top human players, would exchange on B4 here and play, let's say, queen e7 or queen d7. Queen e7 looks normal. Um, because this maintains black structure, it's, it's pretty safe. Of course, you can claim that white is slightly better because of the bishops, but at the moment doesn't really have any effect on the game. That looks like a normal way to go. I'm guessing that... that both machines assess this just as better for white, just because of the bishops. And, well, you know, maybe there's a chance to um, gain control of the A file as well. White is slightly better. But instead, B6 from Stockfish. And now I found Alpha Zero's next move a little bit surprising. I would have anticipated exchanging on A5 because this is potentially a weakness, we can see that very clearly with the bishop and queen in close proximity, and then simply rook b1 to just put the rook on the open file. Seems better for white to me. 
But no, alpha zero played in a different way. It played B5. So it's gained space and actually we'll see that positionally this proves to be very important later on. And it's about fixing that C6 square. So let me give an example of how that can turn to white's benefit. For example, if black breaks with E4, knight d4 and after these exchanges then white's knight is ready to come into c6 oh potentially might might go to f5 as well uh, perhaps alpha zero would prefer to go in that direction but anyway you can see that the pawn on b5 certainly cramps black's c pawn here restricts the c pawn and gives white the possibility to come into c6 um knight e6 looks like a normal move to me here but instead, knight d7 from Stockfish, rook t1, and that makes room for the bishop to go all the way back to a1. Well, we've seen this kind of thing before. This bishop just clears out of the way, out of the range of black's knight, if it ever ends up on these squares. Um, and also, well, makes makes room for the, for the queen, potentially, <laughs> Uh, here, as, as we're about to see. Now, a4, I was wondering what happens on a4, because this could be annoying for white, but I quite like this move, knight d4. There's a funny move. So if pawn takes, then we can take here. And if bishop takes, knight takes, and you can see that this knight has the potential to come into d5, and that pawn on b5 is useful because it restricts the movement of the c pawn. I you never know, the knight might bounce around here as well. And it's not so significant that the knight can come in here. Well, I mean, tactically, it could be problematic as well. But yeah, you can see the point to b5, basically. OK, let's move on with the game. So bishop a1 just played. Bishop g6. Now queen b2. Well, that's uh, a fine way to prevent black from playing e4. A stockfish plays knight a4 and queen nudges to the side. Of course queen b2 is just a draw but now it's time to embark on the attack um, or just make waves in the center. So d4 looks very natural because after this exchange then the knight comes to this fine square and we can see that it really has been worth playing the pawn to b5. Now, you might like to just take your time here, to pause the video if you want to, and think how you would continue with white from this position. This is fascinating. We've seen already that alpha zero likes the bishops very much, but f3 in this case isn't so great because it leaves white's pawn slightly oddly placed. There are sort of weaknesses here. So for example, the, the queen can head over to the, the king side very quickly and then knight here. And there, there's, there's potential for black in this position, definitely. But alpha zero played bishop f3. And after the exchange, it didn't play knight takes, but g takes f3. I, I'd uh, foreshadowed this recapture right at the beginning of the game. Yeah, you'll notice the similarity between this game we looked at previously. Uh, bishop looks down at g7, and alpha zero simply wants to open up the g file. And that's a deadly combination. So let's see how this works in practice. Well, of course, knight c6 is premature because the queen comes over. But first of all, king h2. And now it seems to me that Stockfish is very cooperative um, because it exchanges on d4, which brings the rook into play. But actually, um, this is a really difficult position already for black. And, and it's possible that this knight could end up on f5, or maybe even c6. So it's sort of understandable that this was exchanged off. However, all white's pieces are now mobilized. Just look how quickly it happens. And it's another case where 
white's pieces exert such incredible control and influence over the board even though you know they're, they're miles away from the king well not the rook but the the other pieces and you can see all white's pieces are coming into play beautifully and that knight actually it's on a very fine square but now that the action has shifted towards the king's side actually it's a bit out of play that's the funny thing um well let me just give you a, a taste of of how dangerous white's attack can be um stockfish play queen e7 here but if queen d7 okay watch this this happens very quickly so h4 with the threat of h5 we are standard uh, run up the board with the h pawn so black blocks bishop comes in and now rook f5 really nice move threatening rook h5 and if that's taken of course this is not a force variation but i'm just for the sake of illustration and then rook g5 is absolutely deadly threatening a mate and well, that's basically the end of the story. Let's go back. So queen e7 played. Rook g1. And now all kinds of uh, mate threats are in the air. Um, if f5, then we can simply take. And we're going to take on f5. It's a disaster. And, yeah, don't, don't forget the h-pawn again. Uh, it looks really nice. So, for example, if knight d7... We'll push the h pawn, uh, threatening h5, and if h, uh, excuse me, if h5, then rook g5 again, using these pins, and that is just a disaster for black. It's incredible how quickly Alpha Zero has managed to shift all its forces over to the king side, starting with that move g takes f3. Uh, so rook g8 played h4 threatening h5 so that's blocked the rook comes in threatening rook takes h6 uh, rook takes h5 so therefore king h6 and white is advancing this is very nice rook f6 very nasty indeed so we're white is teeing up for some nasty sacrifices here um gives up the exchange now that can't be taken unsurprisingly that leads to mate in short order so the king goes back so what i mentioned in the introduction about control this position is all about control and restricting black's pieces in fact all over the board so you can see the pawn move to b5 restricts all black's queenside pawns this bishop just has such influence over the diagonal uh, this rook beautifully placed here and now white is storming forward in in the center of the board and you can see that black's major pieces simply don't have any uh, prospects at all in this position of course if uh, queen takes then rook takes f7 so that accounts for rook g7. I mean, this looks absolutely miserable, but in fact, there really is nothing better for black. There are, there are no open files. And now it's all about creeping forward just carefully and slowly. Well, I mean, in some ways, I think this is a very human exchange sacrifice. I don't, I don't think this is anything extraordinary. I think Alpha Zero's play beforehand was extraordinary, but this next part of the game well you could see any of the top players in the world playing like this um, and enjoying it very much you know whether it's Carlson or Ronian or any, any of the top players we've seen games like this so if Queen d7 then the king just comes up the board completely safe and we're, and we're heading for f5 so the game went rook d7 f5 I mean could play king h4 first but anyway goes for it because black can do nothing here 
Now, if rook g5, then this leads to a checkmate very quickly. King h4. It's a nice square for the king. Um, it's just going to pick up this pawn. You can see that even though things are opening a little bit on the king's side, then white has such control over this diagonal that these rooks are never going to come into play. And this is a classic squeeze. And the end game is just fantastic for white. And that's clear because the rooks just don't still don't have activity. So for example, here and slowly but surely um, after taking here and then bringing the king round, then the rook comes here and we advance through the middle. Well, something similar happens in the game. Okay, rook g6, king takes pawn, why not? The, the major pieces can't do anything. And that is a monster bishop. Now white is just shuffling the pieces a little bit. Queen comes back and these are exchanged. I mean, there's not a lot that black could do about this. And now there's just a little bit of rearranging to do. Uh, the king obviously would like to come to this beautiful square. And once again, very important that black's rooks don't gain any activity at all because of the power of that bishop. Now here, uh, Stockfish gives back the exchange. But if, for example, king d7, then white would play like this. and slowly but surely creep into the position like so and you know don't forget there's potentially e5 um, potentially also protecting this pawn and pushing forward with f5 i think this is the surest way to go with rook h1 and and see how black defends there but it, it's a completely winning position so the game rook takes bishop And white is even a pawn up here. But not a lot to do. If rook takes, then e5, that's going to win. And if king, king takes was played, and now it's just a case of pushing through the middle. Um, here, the game was terminated. Well, this isn't too difficult. For example, here, and the rook comes down. Well, there's a threat to play e6, but you know, this this one is is under fire as well. It's it's simply a winning position for white. Just love that game. As I said, real contrast. It's all about control. Um, but coming back here, isn't it extraordinary? From this seemingly quite calm position, how within the space of a few moves, uh, white gains just the most powerful attack. So. You know, within five moves, we have this position, and Black's king is just getting cut to shreds. Just a wonderful game. Um, there'll be more Alpha Zero games coming your way. Uh, don't forget, do check out the playlist to have a look at previous videos. If you're not a subscriber, click on the subscribe button down there, free to subscribe, and you get instant notification of new videos when they're posted if you click on the bell as well. And if you want to support the channel, then do check out the PayPal. And um, if you want to look at the rewards on patreon.com powerplaychess, then do check those out as well. Thanks for watching.